So what does the world look like when more organisations start adopting and leveraging and implementing a strategic project approach? It has, as a part of its operational fabric, this undercurrent, consistently and persistently, as I like to say, of strategic activity happening. There is an ongoing level of work that's being done to shape the business for the future that it hopes to achieve. It's const the business is constantly evolving because the people within the business are adapting the business to that future. In the world that's at the highest version of this, um, your people are starting to generate the ideas of where opportunity lies. Your people are saying, hey, I, here's a project that we believe will take us in a new direction. Here is a product that we might go out and test because we've worked with our clients. We worked with the, the teams in another part of, part of the business. And if we, if we start to focus on this thing, we believe that it, there's value to the business. Let's go test it. Let's go experiment. So people within the business become the engine that drives the business. The leaders in the business then are the navigational system, if you will. They're starting to ensure that we're headed in the direction that we want to go. And that direction um, is um, discriminated, that we're, we're um, distinct in what we're offering to the marketplace and the way we're perceived by customers, that, that we're meeting the needs of our shareholders. Seems to like liberate everyone from so much work that's unnecessary for everyone's specific role. Mm -hmm. If if a, a strategic project is implemented or a series of them, a multi-layered approach, uh, the people in all of their different roles get to really own their specific roles, leadership included, mm -hmm. and do what you know. It's, it feels like. Um, yeah, it, it seems to liberate people to do their best work. It creates what I call bandwidth, leadership bandwidth, specifically. So you, we tend to think as, of leaders from a, um, a role and responsibility perspective, when in fact anybody can lead. So you, you can lead with your technical knowledge, you can, you can lead with your commitment and determination, you can lead by lifting the people up around you. And so you start to create leadership bandwidth across your entire organization. And the, the leaders of the business can free up the time it takes to actually set the business direction, to actually um, create a framework in which their people are the best that they can possibly be. And the people within the business see that they have the ability to lead without title, without a, a particular role or, or um, position description that says leader attached, has leader attached to it. So all of a sudden you create this bandwidth of leadership that, that happens once again at, at that multi-layered sort of way and, and people at the top of the organization or at the center of the organization as I prefer um, can take that broader more forward focused view of the world. A series of strategic projects can flatten an organization, so to speak, lose a hierarchy and place people at the center and the outer of mm -hmm. an organization. Michael Henderson actually made it a corporate anthropologist, the difference between circles and triangles. So our, our traditional hierarchical view of organizations comes from the turn of the 20th century, where you have this triangle where the people at the top of the organization have their direct reports and they set expectations and then tell them whether they're meeting those expe expectations or not. And that happens like Russian Matryoshka dolls down through the organization. If you're going to create a truly empowered organization, what you want to create instead is a circle where people at the edge of the organization, those people most familiar with the value that business delivers, um, are brought together in cross-functional teams to shape where the business is going in their particular world. The leadership then is at the center of that circle and their job is to support and enable those teams at the edge of the organization. And Michael talks about that's the way a tribal culture works. 
And he said the distinction that you make between a tribal culture and a traditional business culture is, in a business culture, 20% of the effort delivers 80% of the results. Whereas in a tribal culture, you have 90% of the people doing 100% of the work that needs to be done by the, by the tribe. The other 10% are either too young to contribute to that 100% or they're too old and they're teaching the people that are too young to prepare to be a part of that 90%. And I think businesses can bring that tribal perspective to the way that they approach, in particular, their strategic activities, setting the direction, telling, telling the organization, we believe this is the direction we want to go, but we're going to in, be informed by the work at the edge of the organization so that we're not operating blindly. Because that's the, the intelligence gathering part of the organization, because you're at the, the value adding end of the business. And projects, giving them projects, is a way for bringing that whole thing together. And it brings it in both directions, once again. What projects should we be doing? Because you're out there and you know probably most directly what will please our customers, you know most directly what will make us more efficient and effective. And then in doing the projects, you're in a, the best position to do work that will be operational once it's completed, they can be translated into how the business actually operates, the front line, so to speak.